Well, he's desperate again. Can we hear sound up here in the northeast? Worrying. But uh, no doubt from that, from that, from that football. Uh, far too much to do. I'm in the main tunnel at the moment, and the uh, main job this afternoon has been, of course, slap and seed up again. Um, I know I mentioned to one of the lads that the uh, fucking come up to the uh, Dean, asking about these the other week. Well, there you are, the Marigolds. Well, you can dry them out for a day or two, full of plants, <coughs> and then just go around and nip up all the heads. There's plenty of them on, loads to choose from. And uh, I usually find a couple of dozen animals to be a good fearful of, uh, of plants for next year. As I say, there's, uh, there's any old one, just uh, take the time, pick them up, and uh, what I like to do is take them down home, get them dried, get them dried, just there. Uh, oh, there's sunshine coming out, bit of yellow, yellow sulfur on them, and uh, pop them in an envelope, mark the envelope, and that's fine for next year. Um, as I say, we do, we, we use loads of marigolds in, in the allotment here, and of course in the homes of tomorrow's, and what it is, it keeps the white fly away. Uh, they don't like the smell of it, so we don't mind a nice bit of flour in the month of tomatoes. And of course, it's doing the job of uh, keeping the pest to pay for. So that's, that's another job out with tonight. Uh, I've got another couple of plants in the bottom there. I'm going to go through them tomorrow. As I say, I like to uh, try and save as much seed as I can. And it, uh, I know they're not expensive, but uh, this is a variety I think I've had for about seven years now. And it's a uh, naughty Mariette. And it's uh, an absolute fantastic cracking little bloom it is. Funny little flowers. And of course, the smell. Well, the way fly here, that, that's what it's all about. So, they'll go away. And as I say, as I say they'll get dried out at home. A half a dozen of, um, of pods. And you'll get, uh, you'll get hundreds of seed out of them. So, I like to take as many as I can. I usually sow about six to eight tra trayfuls, full seed trayfuls. Uh, I give a lot away to friends and family, and of course a lot just kept down here for a lot of uh, And we're going around to tomorrow's and pet lights, right through the greenhouses, plenty of marigolds, and uh, it's a big help. As you say, the, the sun's shining this side, the rain's coming down from above, you know, only happening in the northeast. Right, well, I'm not the only one that's been busy, uh, as you can see. Top tunnel, nearly done. Rogers has done a fantastic job here. He's uh, cleared all the tomatoes off. Of course, this is where we had all the, the large American tomatoes and the Spanish tomatoes. Uh, money maker, they were fantastic. But uh, Rogers busy on the beds now. And what we're doing, we just gently turn it in, and then hopefully tomorrow we'll get about ten good bunfuls of uh, good horse manure. Lay it over the top, and then we've got a big black sheet that will completely cover the whole bed. And that'll that'll sit there quite quite happily till um, till February when we put the early taties in. As I say, the sun's coming up here now. The rain's pouring down, and it's uh, it's just unbelievable. But it's still red hot in these tunnels. Right. So as I say, um, another job I've been trying to crack on with as I went to bed. There's bellus daisies, there's wallflowers, there's pansies. Um, they're all potted up in their trays. No doubt they'll go in the bottom tunnel tomorrow because the nests are on there and it'll be nice and cool. We'll probably give them a week or a fortnight just chilling off and it'll be just nice to go outside. Uh, what I've uh, been trying to suss out the day, uh, I've got a long bed here where we had the Spanish tomatoes, the long plastic tubs. Um, what, I'm, what I'm thinking of doing is to put a, a leak bed along here. Um, as I say, I'm entering back into the shows again next year. So I don't want to take up too much room in the garden, really, to keep us there uh, as much room as we can for vegetables. Uh, I don't want to start cluttering the place up with um, show stuff and taking up all the room. Uh, so I'm going to try and think of some clever ideas of um, how I can utilise some of the spaces. As I say, this row here, we had, uh, we had about nine Spanish tomato plants in this one here. So the idea is for next year, um, that's it. Clear these out, they'll not get thrown away, they'll, they'll come in handy, they'll go outside. Um, I've got uh, four or five nice big pumpkin plants, so I might just, uh, I might pop them into there. I might come in handy. 
Um, what I have got is a lot of these old recycling boxes. Uh, so instead of having the long ones, what I'm thinking of doing is to put the uh, I should get a move 14 on this shelf along here. And that'll do for the base. Um, some good soil, well manured, um, well fed. And then if I use a pot on top, like a ring culture method, uh, that's my idea. And the, the sh to put the show leaks into them. Uh, next year, both sides of these are going to be netted. They're going to be lifted right up all the skirts. The doors will be taken off, and what we'll do is we'll put a mesh door on either end. And so it's a, it, we've still got a cover, but we've got plenty of fresh air from both sides and from both ends. And of course, that's what you need for your leaks. Plenty of fresh air. I haven't shown leaks for a few years now, but um, as I say, I'm due to retire next year, uh, full time. So I'm hoping to get back into the shows again. Uh, I, I've always enjoyed showing. So this is uh, step one: is to get a good trench for the for the show leaks. I should get a good dozen, 15 down this row here. Uh, I'm making a frame outside with a net covering. So what I'm thinking of doing is to put a, a dozen and a half or a dozen in here and a dozen outside under cover. Um, then I've got, of course I've got the croissants and I've got two onions to go in. So it's all about space. Uh, as I say, when you're in the allotment, space is a premium. You don't want to use up all your space on, on just on show, show vegetables. Uh, we'll let you grow as much as we can for the home. So I'm just uh, I'm just trying to utilise spaces um, that I think I can get away with putting show stuff in. Uh, the top greenhouse, or the top shed where we do all the potting off, uh, where the mixer is, uh, what I'm thinking of doing is I might put these up there and put the show onions in them. And what I will do, I'll get uh, at least four. I'll get 12 good show onions in them. So that's, that's an idea up here, down the centre of that um, top shed. Uh, and then put these on the bottom. So I've got the show onions, I've got the show leeks, I'll have some outside. Uh, I need a space for some dahlias and of course the croissants, they'll have to go under cover. But uh, I'm working on that, I'm trying to get away along the allotment, different parts that we haven't used as well as what we should have. Uh, so, yeah, we'll come up with some good ideas. But we'll get there, we'll not be beat. Um, I've got a big, massive plastic tank up the top end there. Um, where I'm been doing is measuring it up. It's a, it's a good 40 inches wide by 36 inches. So I've just measured this part here at the bottom and it'll, uh, it'll sit quite comfortable in this corner. It's a big game, um, big large metal framed uh, water tank. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take a top of it and use it as a as a feed um, as a feed tank. I've got plenty of nettles. I've just been up the garden this afternoon here back down home. And I've got another load of nettles, so they'll come down. And what I'll do, I'll try and set the water tank up in here, and I'll uh, I'll fill the full of nettles, and that'll do um, that'll do a feed for the um, hopefully a feed for the leeks. Uh, as I say, uh, we've got two barrels in the corner, one fresh, and one with the horse manure. Now that sack will have to come out because that's been in there for a, for the, all this year, so that'll come out. We'll clean the tank out, fresh water, and then next year we'll put a new bag of horse manure. So that's um, that's the plan for that. Get that sorted out. As I say, it's all about uh, planning. If you're well ahead, and then you'll not be um, you'll not be caught out. As I say, the uh, the tunnel's looking fantastic at the moment. We'll just need that manure on, and then we'll finish with this tomorrow. We'll put our shelves up, which is uh, our shelves going here, and we'll get um, 20 tomorrow plants in buckets. Go right along the shelves here. And then the hanging baskets, will they be coming in December? So all we'll have to do in here, I might, uh, what I might do in the more afternoon is when Roger finishes his bed off, is to just put a, a tad of GS fluid in the water and give it a bit soaking with that. And then what I'll do, I'll make a big spray up, some uh, soapy water and some uh, GS fluid, just a little bit, not too much, and I'll spray all the greenhouse out, because uh, as you know, when you've had tomatoes and that in, you've got uh, little bits and pieces being fallen on the ground, and... Uh, and of course, yeah, flies. That's, uh, and with the heat, it sets them away. So I'm going to give them, give everything a good spray out. We've got quite a bit of work to do in here, but uh, no doubt, before next year, we'll have it all chip shape. 
the the far greenhouse, which is uh, what we're going to put the melons in next year. Well, that is going to come into, into use. We're going to set the heater off in there, just a small heater, a small gas heater, and that's where we're going to bring our show leaks up in. So I'll take another pop up to my uh, friend's garden next week, up to Steve's, and we're going to try and get a nice leak head and some onion seed, and then we'll be down home. Uh, where I've been this afternoon actually, trying to get the greenhouse sorted out, bring the last of the bedding up, get that potted up, and then I can get my greenhouse all sorted, all sprayed, cleaned out ready <coughs> for um, beginning of November. Of course then the heat will be going on, the lamp will be going on, the light, um, and then with, with what pods or what uh, well, leak seed, we'll get them stuck in and get them um, get started off for the new season. Um, for the time being, we're going to leave it here for the moment, then we're going to pop next door and uh, we'll have a look at them tanks down, down in the bottom top. Right, I'm back again. You wouldn't believe how quick the weather can change up here in the northeast within a state of a half an hour. We've had heavy rain and now the sun shines out. It just goes to show you. It's absolutely beautiful here now, and of course we're in the tunnel, in the lower tunnel now. Um, I've got a couple of little jobs I want to get up the road here. Oh, as I showed you on a previous video, uh, video, this is the nettle barrels. And just taking that lid off, you've got to have a good, uh, good sense of smell to be able to put up with that. It's absolutely honking, but uh, there's another bag going in, as I say. I'm really lucky. Because I can collect these on a regular basis. I've got a piece of land at the back of my house, um, which is not used, grows wild. It's a lovely haven for wildlife. Uh, foxes, all the birds, beautiful. And of course, there's some great nettle patches, and uh, I'm really lucky. And I can just go and help myself anytime I need them. But what I like to do, I like to crop them. Uh, by, me, by cropping, it's uh, Straight to MCA, early spring, midsummer, and then just before the winter sets in, I can get that, my last crop off them. Now, this barrel's not going to be used until February, January, February, and of course, if you can put up this well, get another bag full in, give myself a little breather first. Um, it's absolutely fantastic stuff for the cabbages, and uh, of course this bed here is going to be full of spring cabbage. And we've got some, uh, we've got some lovely all year round collies here. I'm going to put a row of them in, <coughs> and what I'm going to try this year, I haven't grew them in a the tunnel before, but I'm going to try and put a row of Japanese onions in, and uh, just see how they come. I've always put my Japanese onions outside, let them winter through, and uh, they kick start itself in the spring fantastic, and you get a, a nice early onion. Uh, we'll also have a good crop of Japanese onions, but um, just, for a, just for a tryout, I want to pop some in the tunnel here and just see how the, the probe with the, and the conditions uh, being covered over in the winter. As I say, the nets will all be up here, both sides will be free, so there'll be plenty of fresh air. Uh, my only worry is the watering. Um, as with any onion, if you, if you let it dry out, nine times out of ten it'll bolt. The red ones are the worst of the lot. Um, you let them dry out and forget about it. Come springtime, they'll bolt. I've seen my Japanese onions outside in the winter. It, on a nice sunny day, it's been cold but dry. And the soil underneath has been dry. And I've went along and watered both sides of it with a hose just to put a bit of moisture on the ground. Because, uh, like you say, red onions are the worst. But uh, these last few years, we, we, we've managed quite well with them. We've, uh, we've kept an eye on them, kept them well weeded. Um, get well watered and then a nice early feed in the springtime with nitro chalk or nettle juice and that they'll just gallop away. Good manured soil, um, they teach better at the top, but we're, we're busy on with that in the moment. We're nearly finished that, I've just limed it last week, got a good liming. Um, the manure's on now, but they can see it three or four days this week it's poured down, so we haven't managed to get onto there yet. But uh, I might, tomorrow afternoon, I might put a couple of boards out and just use them for surfing on uh, and plant the onions that way. 
Yeah, that's if the rain holds up. Our forecast for gales again tomorrow. So if it is too windy, there's no way I'll be attempting that. But um, as I say, there's, there's loads of jobs you can get on with. And that's just, this is just one of the priority ones I like to, I like to keep tackling. Lid back on. Just keeping the heat in there. Keep the fermentation going. And uh, come January and February, well, it's it's like pea soup now. And all I'm doing is adding, adding, adding. I'll probably top it up with some fresh water tomorrow, and then it'll be um, that'll be fantastic. Come January and February, and that'll be fed for the cabbages. Um, I want to make a new tank next door where I'm going to put that leak trench. So my idea being, I put the big tank in there, I can fill it up, and I can, all next year I can come up with bags of um, nettles, feed the tank, and then it'll be a lovely juice for the leeks. Um, I've got comfrey for potash, I've got horse manure, um, so yeah, we've got quite a few feeds yeah, that will that we can go through. Uh, tomorrow, if we do get the the heavy rains, well, there's the spring cabbage, absolutely fantastic, lovely little plants, and they're just perfect for putting on there now. And yeah, they've been sitting in this rock tunnel here for a fortnight. I think I showed you them on the last day, uh, on the last video I made. But, um, and these are on a care flex. These are a pointed cabbage. And you get a beautiful, small heart. But that's all we want in here. We don't want any big cabbages, just, just nice small ones. I've got some nice bold ones here. Uh, some Duncan, care flex, and I've got the all year round air cauliflower. So, this bed will be full tomorrow. If it is bad, if it is wet, wet and windy, we'll come in here and we'll get this bed done, get it finished, and then we'll get these get these set away. Um, there's nothing needs to be done in this bed now. It's, it's been turned over. I had a bit of lime in it there the other week. It's had manure in it. I haven't even bothered giving it a wash with GS Fluid this year. I think it's, it's still nice and clean um, after these sweet corns are not worrying. So I think all I'll do is I'll give it a light raking over and then... It should be nice and firm underneath because we haven't went down too far with the fork. It's just been lightly forked over. It should be nice and firm underneath and that'll be perfect for putting them cabbages in. Well, hopefully, like you see, depending on the weather tomorrow, it's say it's either cabbages or we'll be up the top end trying to sort out these tanks for some um, some refreshing drinks for the plants for next year. For the time being, well, see you soon. Okay. Well, hi everybody, and uh, welcome back again for the last part of this video. As you, you all know, we're down in the low polytone, and uh, we prepped all these beds last week. So, if you remember, we had the sweet corns in here, and the last job to do this, this year, is dig up a spring cabbage soon. All we have done, all we've done with this bed is put a bit more manure in it. Uh, give it a bit of lime, good manure, and rake that level because it's, it's nice and firm underneath. Uh, nice firm soil, and that's just what you want for the cabbages. And of course, the spring cabbage lend itself great to this soil. Go straight in, no problem. A little bit of water. I want to keep the beds. Nice and clean, just working side by side. Uh, the only thing we do use is a couple of boards to surf on. Uh, not Hawaiian style, Thor style. And all we're doing is we're keeping our feet off the soil, stop compacting it, uh, and so we can get up and down the rows. Once the rows are in, we can take the boards off and we can get either side, weed from either side for the first couple of months, just for the, uh, the short neck toe. It shouldn't need much weeding, as I say, once the cabbages and the, the collies I'm going to put a flat row of collies on here just to finish this off. But once you start growing, it's going to blanket out all the soil, so we shouldn't have any bother uh, with weeds. Yeah, that's a plan for, for this year. Let's get this finished, and then next year we'll 
we'll well line the soil again. The wheel holes are back out. We'll get in them back out again. Uh, so we so can just turn the tap on and we, it will go. More than more than one go. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is if you've just had five pints of uh, Chen Club Special, is not attempt this like me. <laughs> um, wait, till you, wait till the legs settle back down again and then you can get back on the board. As I say, it's an easy enough job. The soil is nice and firm, so the captures are going well in. Now, well spaced, there's plenty of room, there's a good uh, foot between the rows and 8 inches to 10 inches between each plant. So, that's ample. They're only a small cabbage, small pointed, and small bowl. We've got uh, two different varieties here. Eden. Angus and Careflex and as I say they, these will lend themselves great to, to this atmosphere in there. Nice and mild. All the skirts are up so there's plenty of fresh air coming through uh, and I'm well pleased with that. I've got a few more to go in and then I've just got a, a row of um, cauliflowers to put on this end. And this will finish this bed off just nice. But there, uh, well, I haven't getting much done outside this week. As you know, like uh, other parts of the country, it's been holding the gale. we uh, had some heavy rains. So, uh, the jobs I've had put on for this week have been put back on hold for the time being. One of the main priorities is trying to get them Japanese onions in this weekend. I'll focus for a little bit of rain tomorrow, but there, uh, no doubt, the bed's just nicely settled down there now. It's been well manured, it's been well lined after the potatoes were in. So it's it's all systems go. If we can get that done this weekend, I'll be well pleased. We've still got a bit of work to do on my, on my fences, but uh, no doubt we'll get caught up with them. But uh, for the time being, I'm just pleased to see these cabbages in. They were just a nice size. All ready for planting out. As I see, I've got a couple of rows of cauliflower to put in now, just down this back end here. And these are uh, all year round collies, and hopefully we'll get a nice collie in the springtime. Well before this, the potato, well before the tomatoes go in in uh, late April, beginning of May. So this bed will be completely cleared. It'll be mucked again, limed again, and it'll be all ready for a fantastic crop of uh, tomatoes next year. So that's another job out of the way. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, as you we'd like if you'd subscribe or share to our channel. So for now, on the plot, till the next video, we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.